Yeah, Absolutely. we have uh, also today um, Fadi Al Wahadi, uh, who filmed himself, and you can see where my cursor is yeah. that he's wearing a press uniform. And I'm going to play just a few moments of it. Yeah. He was shot. It well, I think I think I think you should play the whole the the whole first uh, whole first clip, like the the yeah. Well, because he's I'll, uh, I'll bear in mind that he's again. live streaming. Yeah, he's uh, so so. Yeah. This is a clip of Fadi like like live streaming while he and uh, the people he's with that could be fellow journalists um, come under Israeli occupation force fire. المشهد صعب للغاية حيث تقام قوات الاحتلال باقتحام مراكز اللواء واخراج جميع النازحين وتقوم الان بقصف مراكز اللواء في المدفعية في التحميرات العامة ابغى ارجع هيا 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 So he was fortunately this uh video doesn't show the moment that he was hit, but he was yeah. hit, and this next video shows the <laughs> aftermath. <laughs> And I'm going to pull up some testimony from the, yeah. the, the moment from one of the fellow reporters because he was among a group of reporters. And so according to another reporter, those were in tough times. We were in an area not designated as an evacuation zone and far from the clashes wearing press uniforms. But the Israeli army's bullets came directly and twice to ensure that we were hit, which they unfortunately succeeded in doing. The army did not stop shooting even after Fadi fell. I went back to carry him. Unfortunately, he was unconscious. Your prayers. Fadi is in dire need of your prayers. His health condition is critical. And I wanted to show, lastly, this photo of Fadi being brought to safety by his fellow reporters. Um, and I just, I mean, this... Um, this hurts to look at. Uh, yeah, it's difficult. I don't know if you have anything to say. I'm I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, um, likewise, like pretty speechless. All right, so uh, we'll we'll move on. Um, keep yeah. Fadi in your prayers. Uh, keep Fadi yeah. in, in your thoughts. However, you see fit to help him. Um, <laughs> do that yeah i mean i think i think if you could move to the the, uh, the if you could move to the the live broadcast interrupted by an airstrike um possibly yeah so yeah. it's like i just think that, yeah as i mean as 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 we've said um israel specifically targets people um wearing press uniforms which um fadi uh it it, it um, uh, again, speculation abounds as to whether he he has died or is just severely injured it's clear that he took fire um yeah um, this is um, <clears throat> there is a uh, yeah that the, um, there are uh, multiple videos you can find them very easily um, on YouTube if you are just to search um, Gaza strike news broadcast or similar. Um, this is a live broadcast See, of an uh, just just uh, play it play it now, Alex. Yeah, this is Al Jazeera. Yeah, I, I I don't have the audio going for it. I hope that's okay. Okay. Yeah, but it's like this is like a live broadcast which is interrupted, like uh, by an airstrike on a building behind the reports. Uh, this is the kind of environment that they're all operating in. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I wanted to bring up um, an incident from October of last year. So, uh, yeah. uh, coming up on a on a year now. This was October thirteenth of last year. And Israeli, the Israeli military struck, attempted to strike a group of seven reporters from uh, Western outlets. Like, I mean, there was Al Jazeera, but there was Reuters, there was Agency France Press. 
And this mm. is via Reporters Without Borders, who, I mean, their copy is uh, schizophrenic. I'm just going to read it really quick before I play a, a portion of this video. Uh, Reporters Without Borders has released a video reconstruction of the tragedy that resulted in the death of one journalist and the in injury of several others. So who who did the tragedy? What was the tragedy? Who's responsible here? <laughs> well, they don't tell you in the first sentence. They have to, they have to, I mean, they 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 go further down and they say, the initial findings of the investigation show that the reporters were not collateral victims of the shooting. One of the vehicles, Mark Press, was targeted, and it was clear that the group's station next to it was journalists. So, I mean, first it's a nebulous tragedy, and then, oh, turns out our investigation found they were targeted for being press. So I'm just going to go ahead and play the video now. October 13, 2023. Near the village of Alma El Shab, South Lebanon, on the border with Israel, a group of seven journalists, clearly identifiable by their press vests, filmed the ongoing tensions between Hezbollah and the Israeli army. AFP, Reuters, and Al Jazeera journalists are positioned precisely here, on this road, bordered by a low wall. About one hour and three minutes before the strike, Al Jazeera correspondent Carmen Jukadar and Al Jazeera photojournalist Eli Brakeha film an Israeli helicopter flying over the border area where the journalists were stationed. We had it to Al Mashab after receiving many notifications. We saw actually a helicopter uh, and we filmed it or we filmed it also. An hour later, a journalist from the Lebanese television station LBCI, a few meters away, reports in a video that he can see an Apache helicopter in the sky not far from them. At around 6 2 p.m., Reuters news agency broadcasts these images live. <laughs> Victim of a bombardment, our journalist says she can no longer feel her legs. We were together, together all the time. 37 seconds later, a second bombardment again targets the position of the group of AFP, Reuters, and Al Jazeera. <laughs> في الثاني ومنشوف النار عم تتصاعد من السيارة حاولنا يعني ذكرنا المنطقة عم تتعرض للقصف بشكل عشوائي أو عم تنقصف لسبب ما قبل هيدا الشيء كان في مروحية عم بتحلق بالجو وكانوا الزملاء زميلات الزملاء These images filmed shortly afterwards show the scene the body of Issam Abdullah The Reuters journalist is killed instantly. So just six days after October 7th of last year, Israel was targeting groups of seven journalists at a time. I don't remember that happening at the time. I missed that. It was a difficult time for me, and I, and I know for a lot of our viewers as well. But that's how the war was kicked off with these attacks on journalists and they've somehow been allowed to continue for a year now. So I wanted to play that clip to, to show, to illustrate that. Um, you had a, you had something that you wanted to, to pull up next, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, if you, it, <clears throat> I mean, like I mentioned, there are, the, the, there are a number of examples of Israel targeted, deliberately targeting um, media media offices in Israel and um, doing things like very kindly ringing um, 10 minutes in advance to say get everyone out we're going to bomb you um, and they do this and they do this and they do this and it is a very serious war crime very very serious war crime indeed so I mean it's just it, it, and, and again this keeps happening often on live broadcasts like in the middle of an interview when someone is near a building um, and no, uh, nothing is said about it by 
um, any you know major press freedom organization really um, but by and large Western human rights groups are silent and um, yes of course Western governments have even less to say um, about this absolutely horrific phenomenon um, but yeah um, it is targeted it is deliberate again the purpose is to prevent the truth of what they are doing getting out into um, the public. Now, I mean, this is an age old story. Um, John Pilger, the legendary um, investigative uh, journalist, um, he uh, uh, produced a documentary in 2010 called um, uh, The War You Don't See, which is all about media misreporting of war. Now, this is a very brief excerpt from, um, yes, the, uh, the, the the war you don't see. Um, it is uh, freely available online. You can very easily go and watch it. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, uh, 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 please do. I think. He, he noted uh, 10 journalists killed since 1992. I'm not sure what year this documentary is from, but just to, I mean, a credit to uh, Mr. Pilger's um, prescience uh we have nearly 200 journalists killed by israel in the past year so yeah. um this is a, yeah. a beast which has been allowed to leave its cage and wreak havoc for decades yeah well i mean i think yeah that, <clears throat> again it, 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 this is not something that started on on october 7th 2023 it is an age old story hey everyone um if you enjoyed this video or or any of our other content uh please give us a follow on twitter or subscribe to us on youtube it'll help us beat the algorithm oligarchs thank you